In Pixar's A Bug's Life, the ants are the good guys. But studying ants shows that ants aren't exactly on the right side of history. If you didn't already know that the bug world was a brutal one, the habits of the slaver ant should clue you in. An entire species that completely depends on the subjugation of another is par for the course in our fallen world, but it's just how the slaver ant survives here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can uh, visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, uh, Richard Kaspar, and Lottie and Aubrey, thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about an ant that is absolutely canceled, but more on that later. It's a very canceled ant. Who was the like the cooking personality that said the N-word and got canceled? Paula Dean? I have no idea. Oh, did she? Ah, uh, I think so. I thought she got canceled for egregious use of butter. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure that's somebody's aunt who got canceled. So that's what I'm trying. This is a joke I'm trying to make, but I can't remember who who the person was. I think it might be Paula Dean. Um, I, I I'm not up on my cooking personalities. Um, but yeah, what are we talking about? We're talking about the slaver ant. That's but because that is a uh, thing we don't like to think about, there's been attempts to rebrand it as the Raider Ant or something else, but uh, it hasn't stuck yet. Yeah. The commanders. <laughs> the what? <laughs> That's the name of the football, the Washington football team. Oh, yeah. They were the, uh, the Redskins were re- renamed to the commanders. Did they? I thought they stuck with the Washington football team. No, that they should never have done that. <laughs> just if we wait, if you don't want to offend anybody, just tell it how it is, right? No one is good. No, not one. No, not one. But yes, we were talking about the slaver ant, also known as the dastardly doppelganger, the Madame Medusa from the uh, the rescuers. Remember that? Um. She kidnapped and enslaved a child. Um, and then Ken Wanta being rude to other ants. Wanta not being rude. Sorry, I messed that up. He does. Who is that? I missed I miss the syllable in is. his name. Ken Wantanabe is um, the guy who plays uh, Katsumoto in the, in the Last Samurai. Oh, that's right. He's, he's the guy who looks almost. Is he also. Let them fight. Yeah, he's the guy who looks almost directly into the camera during the Godzilla movies and says, "Let <laughs> let them fight, Godzilla." Um, he's also uh, what's his, uh, he's uh, the fake Ra's al Ghul in Batman. Batman. Oh, Begins. that's right. He has like two. He lines. looks the same in all of those movies too. Because it's the same guy. I know, I know, <laughs> but I mean, like, they're also. 15 years apart. Oh, yeah. He, I, I mean, so does Christian Bale. He's the, he doesn't age. He looks the same in, in, he looked the same in 2005 as he does in, does now. Tom Cruise also. Just I was just... Uh, well, I, it's actually been a little That's while true. since I've watched The Last Samurai. But, like, man, that, that movie came out in, like, 2001 or something like that. And uh, you, you compare that to, like, the newest Top Gun, and it's like... that. There's no way these are 22 years apart. That's the power of Scientology. Yes, that's the that is the uh, <laughs> the, basically an anti wrinkle cream. It's the everlasting elixir of paying your way <laughs> to being an alien god. Yeah, that explains. Th- that's a lengthy explanation of that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Point is that Ken Watanabe played a samurai in the Last Samurai. <laughs> Which will become relevant as soon as we talk about the binomial (laughs) nomenclature of this animal. Would you like me to? (laughs) Yes. 
please, so that people stop being confused. It's in the Kingdom Animalia. It's in the phylum Arthropoda. It's in the class Insecta. It's in the order Hymenoptera. Hymenoptera. It's in the family Formicidae. We're getting into ants here. Subfamily Formicinae or Formicinae. If you're a if you're a movie goer, and or it's in the genus Polyura. Polyurgus, and the binomial name is Polyurgus Samurai. I mean, there's slaver ant is pretty much everything in the genus uh, Polyurgus. But I mean, if I'm gonna choose one, <laughs> it's gonna be the one where the species name is Samurai. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So. Since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, nitty gritty nomenclature. Okay. I wanted to know, I wanted to like learn what samurai means today. Cause I was like, why is it called samurai? Just cause it's from Japan. Oh. And I, uh, but I did not, I refrained cause like we might be doing nitty gritty nomenclature. I will refrain from learning that information. Uh, okay. There's a line in The Last Samurai that spoils this. So if you remember that line, you will get this answer correct. Um, I don't yet. Um, and after, so we'll see, we'll see. Okay, Nitty Gritty Nomenclature is part of the show where I ask you, Joe, what uh, is the English translation for the binomial nomenclature? Polyaricus Samurai. And finally... We have a word that is not Latin or Greek. It is Japanese. Yeah. Um, so does Polyergus Samurai mean A, multi-armored warrior, B, hard-working servant, C, defender with multiple plates, or D, slave of many talents? Um, so I know that a samurai is a servant, um, but this ant isn't a servant. I, and I know the samurai code has you like extremely devoted to a master. So it could mean slave. I'm going to go with a servant one. Final answer. Hard-working servant? Final answer? No. No. The slave one. Slaver one. Slave of many talents. Yeah. Final answer. That is incorrect. You were right the first time. It is hard-working servant. Hard-working? Yes. Polly? So poly means much or many. So it can mean multiple of something, but it can also mean a lot of something. And so a lot of work yeah. is the like literal. Polyergus means a lot of work as an adjective, it means hardworking. Unacceptable. Yeah, I knew that would throw you off, so everything else has like multi or many or whatever. But samurai means samurai is a is a uh actually a verb that means to serve, but you it's it is used in Japanese as servant. It does not describe this ant. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, I mean, this, the samurai, yes, were servants, but also uh, they went and did terrible things to other people because, they because of their status and their the fact that they were like the only ones allowed to carry swords. For a good portion of uh, feudal Japan, so you know we're gonna see uh, just how uh, morally upright the slaver ant is, and you can go ahead and make your own judgments about how that uh, how that correlates to the how the samurai actually played out. Would you like to know what it looks like? Sure. It looks like an ant. I knew it. Uh, it's a little brown ant. The queen and workers of this uh, of uh, this particular species are typically black or dark brown. Males 
are brown with white antenna and wings, and they look pretty sick. And there's it's hard to find a picture of them, but um, male slaver ants look really cool. Like I've never seen white on an ant. No, uh, I guess like clear for like those ghost ants. But it it doesn't look clear unless I don't know maybe something was on him. But it looked like if you go to Ant Wiki and scroll to the bottom, you will see this really cool ant. Other than that, it's an ant. It's uh, it's got its ant, ant parts looking like a particular not 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 nothing particularly stand out about it. Um, six legs, exoskeleton, head, abdomen, thorax, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. mandibles, yeah. antenna, compound eyes, which allows you to um, hit uh, a super uh, allows you to hit moves with greater accuracy in Pokemon. Let's talk about how big it is. Because when you're talking ants, that's all everyone wants to know, really, in terms of what it looks like. Welcome to the Beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions and relatable terms to a quiz that's a fun for the whole family. It's also a part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy.com. What's it called when you... What's the name of, like, this... Like, when you use friction... When you're a bug and you use friction... Or clicking to make sounds. Striation. Striation. Or stridulation. Stri- That's actually... No, s- striation is like um, geological... Lines. Lines, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's... Str- you're right, stridulation. 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 You can stridulate in a measure up, if you'd like. Uh, we do have a new measure up intro. We were going to hear from Flick from... Uh, the bug's life, but we got a last minute measure up from Nora. She says, I thought I should rec- record. <laughs> I thought I should record. I'm illiterate. <laughs> Cannot read and write Latin. I What's thought a I should re- record a measure up, but then I realized I'm at work in my cubicle and had to whisper. I do not know how usable it is, but this is the cost of a podcast of podcast listening at work. <laughs> just be glad you can do that. Isn't it nice to just like be be able to work but also just let your mind listen to a podcast or watch a show or something? Yeah. Oh man. That would be Whenever I have a task at work where it's like, okay, oh, yeah. oh I just have to knock out this spreadsheet. Just good good spreadsheet. Save it for Friday. Put on a podcast or an audiobook and just tune out. Love it. It's great. It's great. Let your mind be at ease. Uh well, let's see. Thank you, Nora, so for sending this in. Let's see how usable it is. We're using it anyway, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Measure up. Kid, did you hear that? <laughs> yes, I did. That was pretty. That was. That's, <laughs> I, I think that's perfect. I don't think we've ever had a whisper one, so that's good. That was very clandestine. I bet you nobody heard it. Yeah, that was very. That'd have been funny if it was like if it ended with like. Nora, what are you doing? <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> like so, <laughs> some like supervisors <laughs> walking by and just like <laughs> cracks cracks the whip. Uh, yeah, it was uh, ASMR. That's what that was. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Nora. Nora. She also sent in uh, an email. I think we didn't we like because we talked about it in the warm up. Uh, which you can, which but you she also sent in a PS. A she said the French Canadian, at least the, oh my gosh, I don't think I can say this. Saguenay, maybe that's fine. Saguenay Lac Saint Jean region, which is the one I think she is from. The French Canadian word for a marmot is siflu, which is whistly. Not whistler, because that would be 
Siffleur, and that would make it too make too much sense. Just a whistly. It's a, look at look. It's a, a whistly sitting on a rock eating a sandwich like a person. <laughs> <laughs> Did we talk about the, the, or is it just this is I okay? I thought she was correcting us, but she's just telling us a fun fact that it's called a whist. It's called a whistly, a whistly. In French Canada, or at least the the region she's she, she's talking about, which I'm not about to try to pronounce either. That's kind of cute, a whistly. Yeah, that def- that whistly. sounds very Australian. Just adding something, just making anything cute. Yeah, just like, uh, like I got my, uh, I got my togs on, and I'm, I'm gonna go over there and pet that whistly. <laughs> or feel, I'm gonna go. But it's not. It's French Canadian. I know. Yeah, but it's just like food. calling something, so something, calling something, a word that's so like mundane and quaint. So whistly, you know. Yeah. Even though they don't whistle, they screech. It's a high pitched screech. Though. I mean, they do like. Well, we ain't talking about. Yeah, yeah, we're talking these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again, Nora, for putting the team on your back. It's been a while since we've had a measure up, and we got one, and I think it's our first whispered one. Love it. So we haven't had a stridulated one. We haven't had a whispered one until now. People so just have a really hard time stridulating, stridulating measure up for some reason. <laughs> when people Marsh code is kind of like a stridulation when people just rub their legs the together the words measure up just don't come out very very easily let's talk worker length there are seven millimeters which is 0.27 inches in freedom units so how many worker ants go into the highest altitude uh, by an air breathing jet engine Sounds like I'd have to slay it. It's an air-breathing jet engine engine living in that cave, terrorizing the townsfolk. An air-breathing jet engine, I think, means that it like it's the jet propulsion comes from air, rather than like I guess rockets that go to space. It's fire. (laughs) It's fire is an oversimplification of what comes out of a rocket. Uh, I assume, but I mean, if it's anything it's like a normal combustion engine, they have to m- mix the fuel with air in order to get it to to like combust the way it needs to. So everything to is like air breathing. Exalt, exalt, exhaust, and the that the, the jet propulsion. What's coming out that's gonna push this jet? Here's a hint. The highest altitude for an air-breathing jet engine was the military's Lockheed uh, SR-71 Blackbird. The oh, Blackbird yeah. is a long-range, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft capable of traveling at more than Mach 3.4. And I realize that you now have all the pieces to do the math. And I figured if you remembered the speed of sound and, and were able to multiply it by 3.4, you deserve the win. Wait, no. You asked for the altitude. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Never. Oh, the second, the next one. The next one's going to have to do okay. it. Okay. So you're just looking for the altitude. Because, yeah, I mean. I was getting confused with the next one. Okay, well, I guess. <laughs> Mach is a measurement of height. What are you, Han Solo? You're just getting your your measurement your <laughs> parsecs wrong. Um, okay, well I know blackbirds can go pretty high. It used to be my like when I was a kid, I had a little toy um, blackbird, and it was just it was like the because it was the fastest one, and it also looks awesome. That's just like it does look awesome. If if it was the fastest one and it looked dorky, then it wouldn't it wouldn't have been my favorite. But man, that's just the perfect combination. Um, I mean, it goes out like into the, like, cur- like the curvature of the earth. You can, uh, like you, out into the exosphere. 
Kind it looks like a Star Wars Episode One spaceship. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the Nubian um, spaceship that they have. The Nubian, eh? All right. Let's go with 70,000 feet. I think it's a version of this or like an, the most the updated Blackbird that Tom Cruise flies at the beginning of Top Gun Maverick. Oh, it's he goes Mach 10 in that. So that's like, yeah. that is fast. An experimental craft, but it looks like this a little bit. I think that because they figured out like this is this is the this is the fast one. This is <laughs> this is how we make it go go zoom zoom. Is by making it is by modeling it this way. I'm gonna say three point one million. That sounds like n so not enough. I know, I know. I was thinking this exact same thing. But like, I, the math, I mean, if it's... How many ants do you have to stack to get to the height of a plane? It's got to be billions and billions, right? Well, it's not. I'm, I'll stick with it because the math all checks out. It's all like whether or not I'm wrong about if it's 70,000 feet. Go. 3.1 million final ants answer? is my final answer. Correct answer is 4 million ants. The Blackbird can fly huh. at ninety thousand feet. I am I'm I'm fat fingering my calculator right now. <laughs> nope, seventy seven and a half percent. Oof. <laughs> Just needed that's I a, needed to say three point like two. Or, or at least no. Yeah, three point three would have gotten me nursing school victory. It's close, but no cigar. And I don't like cigars, so it's not. I wouldn't even want the prize. That stinks. What if, what if it was banana? You know what stinks? Cigars. That's true. Let's talk about the length of a queen. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's eight millimeters. There's a, a once again, nobody wants to write down the lengths of ants or bugs. But they do have pictures where there's like a little line that says this is how many two millimeters is. I don't care about what the line is. I want to know what the ant is. <laughs> um, so what you're supposed to do, like but, like go under the picture with your finger and your thumb and then kind of just do like a little sextant walk all the way up to the, the top. That's what I did. And it looked like there was four segments of that. Okay. Four times two is eight. Or in freedom units, zero point three inches. Slightly bigger than the word. So how many how many queen ant lengths could the Lockheed uh, SR seventy one Blackbird travel in one hour? And here's a hint: the Blackbird's top speed was set at three point four in a test flight. However, Major Brian Shule reported. A speed of more than Mach 3.5 on an operation while evading a missile over Libya. Sorry, going by 3. Point, um, 3.4 or 3.5? We're going by 3.5. We're trusting Brian Scholl. Okay. The Major hasn't let us down yet. Also, he had a Top Gun moment where he had to push his plane past... Uh, top speeds in order to avoid a missile and that's cool that is cool my answer is going to be 517 million ants in one hour do you know how fast the, um, the speed of the sound speed is, of sound is? I don't know exactly, but I think it's somewhere around 700 miles per hour. Yeah, uh, I don't remember what it is either, but <laughs> that's what Mach is. If anyone doesn't know, Mach is the speed of sound. So Mach 3.5 is 3.5 times the speed of sound. 
Very so, fast. Final answer? Yeah. So that's what? Like, t- that's uh, tw- 2,450 miles per hour, if if I'm right about it being 700 per Mach. The correct answer is 540 million ants. I'm so Point sure. Two. That is a 95%. I am. I There you go. I nailed it. That's an, a solid A. Yes. Mach, Mach 3.5 is 2,685 miles per hour. Okay, so I was a little, I'm a little under on, I just put 700. It sounds like it's like 720 or something like that. Also, I don't know if the, the I imagine this is for long range reconnaissance, it can fly um, fast for, <laughs> for a long time, but I don't know if it can do top speed for a whole hour. I don't know that it can't. I don't know that it can. So just like take that with a grain of salt. It's the coolest plane, in my opinion. It is a pretty cool plane. It is the coolest scene of that movie, of Top Gun Maverick. And that has a lot of cool scenes. It's a des- it's designed to be one long cool scene. So, <laughs> and it, like yeah, Mach Ten. What is that? Like seven thousand miles per hour. That's uh, it's it's pretty fast. I mean, it's science fiction, but still, maybe not for long. Um. Would you like to hear some fast facts before we get into the major fact? Sure. Slaver ants are native to Japan, but they can be found in Korea in northeastern China. It's pretty easy to accidentally bring ants somewhere. Oh, yeah. There are 14 species in the genus, and they all share similar behaviors that we'll talk about later. Polyergus workers are built to be deadly. They have sharp, thin mandibles that make them skilled in dispatching other arthropods. However, they are completely unable to feed themselves. And I don't know. I think it's because of the way their mouth parts are shaped or they don't have feeding mouth parts at all. Um, but if you look at a picture of them, their mandibles are just like two little needles rather than like the um, multi-pronged th- pinchers that you usually see on ants. Uh, but colonies have one queen, but they also might have ergotoids, which are... Worker ants with big butts that might be able to reproduce if the queen is killed might be, it has been said, because researchers aren't sure if they, if these ergotoids actually can reproduce. Uh, Colonies have a lifespan of about 10 to 15 years before collapsing. Sheesh. But that's all I got. All right. You could have lived in a colony in the 60s and enjoyed the entire career of the Beatles. <laughs> uh, provided you were... Your colony was in the park across the street from Abbey Road. Mm-hmm. Or from Capitol Records. Like Ke- Kensington or wherever that is. I don't know. Um Speaking of, you mentioned that ants are really easy to take from one place to another. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on the show before, but um, every I think you have, I have. But but go ahead with the uh, my zoo. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, in case anyone hasn't heard heard, um, in the Jacksonville Zoo, uh, whenever the it's the rainy season and in, in the spring and summer, um, just just un uncountable numbers of ants uh emerge and just and coat the the walkways the sidewalks the boardwalks um they're everywhere they're just they just cover the uh the these things and you're you know you just they don't bite you just walk on them walk over them they do get on your shoes they sometimes crawl up your leg or whatever it is not pleasant um even though you know they're not biting, you still just don't want to be covered in bugs. So you kind of just keep, if you're there, you just keep walking constantly so that, because if you stop, you're going to get a bunch of ants on you. But apparently they were brought over, they're an invasive species brought over in a ship 
um, that just had some like was I don't know what they were bringing over, but the zoo employees were like, yeah, a ship just came into the port nearby with a bunch of these ants and now there's literally no way to get rid of them <laughs> there's we are we are absolutely stuck even if we wanted to um so yeah it is easy to bring ants from one place to another but let's talk about the major fact which i bet you can guess what it's going to be considering this is called the slaver ant as i was researching this i was like i could have sworn we did an ant like this before like or this ant in particular, or something just like it. But I was—I did a search did, on all of them. I was thinking about the leafcutter ant, which is a farmer. Yeah, um, and the Dracula They're ant. Um, we've done a lot of ants, and I could have sworn there was one that did, that had this exact behavioral pattern, because um, I—it was all familiar to me. But maybe I was just familiar to me because, and that's when I put it on the list. Um, but anyway, so it's the slaver ant. Humans have been enslaving each other since forever. Uh, we like to blame just Europeans for slavery, but if you look at history, you'll see that pretty much every race across the continents and across time itself has engaged in slavery from one at one point or another. From the Egyptians to the Jews to the Assyrians to the Babylonians to the Persians to the Greeks to the Romans to the Mongols to the West African empires to the Europeans. We just love to give prisoners jobs. But... Against their will. Okay. Okay, well, I mean, it's it, almost like people are not good. No one is good. No, not one. I, I mean, if you get a bunch, if you have a bunch of prisoners and you got stuff that needs doing, like, might as well get them to do it, right? <laughs> and that's what everyone has said for a long time until we decided that wasn't good. <laughs> until, interestingly enough, the Europeans were like, "Okay, finally, we're we're done," right? Um. Anyway. Animals tend to be different. When it comes to members of one species interacting with members of another species, they either get along, ignore each other, fight each other, or eat each other. This is fairly tame stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a world where there was no, there's no slavery. There's only cannibalism. Yeah, there, there was only... And that world is the animal kingdom. <laughs> there is a world where there's no slavery. There is just total extermination. Um, so, I don't know. If you read through like the Bible or something like that, and you're and and you're just like, and the, the one one group defeats another group in battle and takes a bunch of slaves, it's like the other option was all of them being killed. So, and there being no more Moabites for the rest of you know history. Uh, not it's the it's 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 not a great situation no matter how you slice it. Um. But anyway, in the animal kingdom, things are very straightforward. It's either we're, we're cool, we're friends, or I kill you. Um, and so it's just what, what a what a what a uh, simple world. <laughs> um, it is just so rare for species to dominate and enslave others. Um, but we already know that ants kind of break the mold on this. They they are have been shown to be farmers. Um, and also ranchers, just like, uh, we mentioned with the leafcutter ant episode, probably 50 years ago at this point, um, <laughs> where they, uh, they will, they keep aphids and, oh, I wanted to mention this. I had a, um, I've, I've had two, um, uh, wildlife encounters recently. I'll start with the first one cause it's not, it doesn't have to do with the ants. We were walking the kids. Um, along the road, um, not along the road, along the sidewalk, um, outside our development. And we passed a small pond that was completely fenced in and inside was like a six or seven foot alligator that has been stuck there, I think. Cause he, I don't know if he can get out. I don't know how he got in, but it's completely fenced around this like small, maybe 60 foot pond. Um, and he's there every single time we pass, so I'm not sure if he can get out. Maybe, hopefully, he can eat a bird or two. Um, but we kept walking a little bit, a little bit further, maybe like 20 feet, and I saw this like snake in the grass next to the uh, um, the the sidewalk, and my eyes followed up the snake, and I saw its head, and its its mouth opened, and it hissed. 
and and we were probably like as I was taking this in and processing it, we were just a few feet away from it, and then so I was like back up, back up, back up, and we just because obviously you know we had the kids with us, so we just turned around and went home. But it was a cotton mouth. Oof. Um, or, or also known as a water moccasin. Um, very clearly, like all the markings, the same girth and everything. So just walking our kids, alligator on the right, keep going a little bit, water moccasin on the right. Welcome to Florida. Let's go home. (laughs) Don't, don't get bit by mosquitoes because, because everybody's allergic to them. Um, the second one, uh, the second wildlife encounter was, uh, there's, also on this walk, there are these v- vines of ivy that um, that go over the, the sidewalk. And it, I was going under one, and I realized it was absolutely covered in ants. Uh, and I took a closer look at it, and there were aphids. There were, there were little clumps of aphids on this vine that the ants were tending to. Um, so we were just talking, you know, t- just ties into what I was just talking about, that um, there are species of ants that will collect aphids and basically farm the honeydew that comes off of them. Um, and, uh, so yeah, they have like little, little pets. Um, and I saw it in, in action, but these guys, the slaver ants, this, that's not their style. <laughs> um, there is another species of ant in Japan called Formica japonica um, that lives alongside the slaver ant, our, our samurai ant. I'll call them samurai ants and Formica ants. Uh, and uh, so what, what will happen is a young samurai ant queen will leave her colony. She will mate. This is important that she mates with a another member of her own species um she will fi- go out and find a uh formica colony so of this other she will go and find a colony of this other species of ant she'll go into the colony invade kill the queen and then take her crown take her spot and so now she is she is of of the uh, she's Polyergus samurai invading and now is the queen of this Japanese Formica Japonica um, colony. And the colony continues to operate as though she were a queen of their own species. And so she, at this point, she'll start laying eggs um, that are fertilized with the mating that she did previously. So these are not like hybrids of formica and um and samurai these are just samurai ants um and so she'll lay these eggs they will hatch they will be taken care of and fed just by by the the this host colony because this is a this is parasitism happening here uh insert obligatory ayn rand joke here um and uh eventually uh so the ants that the the samurai ants that hatch from these eggs are her little slavers um not slaves they're her slavers and so eventually the the host colony ants the formica ants will start to die out because their queen is dead and no more for, for formica ants are being hatched or being you know are being born so the slavers will gain a numerical advantage but they want to keep the formica ants taking care of them feeding them digging the tunnels all the stuff building building the nest so the samurai slavers will find other formica colonies nearby they will rise to the surface of their nest of their host nest in large numbers and then they will just go over to the other uh, colony and go in and steal as many larvae as they can. So they don't go in there and just massacre all the ants. They'll, I mean, they're, they're, they're like you said, they're built to kill other ants. 
So they can, and they do, but they don't go in there to exterminate that other colony. They go in there specifically to steal all their larvae and bring them back to their host colony. And then those little guys will grow up to be their slaves. They will, um, they will be the workers in the samurai colony because, as you said, the samurai workers themselves can't feed themselves. They're not built for digging. They're not built for for um, feeding. They're built to control other colonies. So, in this situation, this is what they have to do. I mean, they obviously this is what they have to do. It's not like they choose to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> So like oh tisk tisk on these ants, um, that you know th this is that this is obviously what they're designed to do. Um, but it's, if they don't do this, then they don't exist. They will die. Um, and so in this, they don't have to do any of the digging or the building or the feeding or the hunting. They can just focus on stealing more baby slaves. And they never actually kill the queen of the colony that they raid, because they're parasites. There's no reason to kill your host. You let them live so that you can come back and take from the giving tree again. They come, they eat, they leave. It's the it's 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 Hopper. It's the it's the grasshoppers. Oh my gosh! I should have, I should have done a Bug's Life. It's very appropriate. It is very appropriate. Even as I'm saying this, I feel like we definitely covered an ant just like this. Um, I must be missing something. I hope we have not, this is not just a, a, a rehash, because I also remember talking about a video game I used to play called Sim Ants. Um, it was just a cheap, low-budget computer game from like 1997 or 8 or something like that, where you would create a colony you would of, of, of black or, or red ants, and they would go and fight other, fight, like you just had... Um, there was like a yard and you were either black or you were red, like, you know, like it was chess colors or something. And your goal would be to completely dominate the other, the other group. Yeah. So unless it's like the, I don't think it's the driver ant, the honey pot. No, the driver ant is a, they're, they're, you know, cause they all have. Their major fact is something other than enslaving yeah. other colonies. <laughs> um, I'm seeing a lot of ants, but none of them are the, the Dracula ant. Yeah, I don't it remember that one. Drinks the blood of its. I don't lava. remember what the major fact was for that one. So, yeah, I don't know. This is just ringing a lot of bells, and maybe I just did like a lot of research on this. I just remember talking about it and bringing up that whole like th that sim ant game. So I don't know. I'm just going crazy. <laughs> Someone will tell us if it if it is. It's like hey, th th this is uh the the redo the redux. But that's all I got. That's uh that's all I got on the slave ramp. That's all. Yeah, I just type. I just did a search for slave and slaver. Nothing came up. It, what a world <laughs> we live in, right? You just did a search for slave and slaver, and nothing came up. This is utopia. All right. Uh, you don't nope. have anything else. All right. So that was the slaver ant for you out there in Podcastia. Uh, this is a tough one uh, because there is almost nothing about this creature's behavior that I want other people to do. So don't kill your competition, don't take their place, and don't steal everyone's babies to be your little minions like the slaver ant here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. 
So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. Life, Death, and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> there you go.